the fountain of grace from the holy ground here in this place here in this place holy one may your presence here open our minds may your spirit among us help us to find you are From the holy ground here in this place, here in this place, holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty. Holy 
We boldly call for the breath of God to spirit us into life, refresh our deserts with water, and passion us in all our days. Spirit in me, spirit in you, spirit me. God, breathe upon your creation. Caress the earth to abundance. Awe us with your power to re-create. Spirit in me, spirit in you, spirit in God, breathe upon this place, this time, mightily, slowly, carefully. Spirit in me, spirit in you, spirit in God breathes, we breathe, and the Spirit plays together as one.
Bienvenue à l'Église unie de Christ aux États-Unis. Quelles que soient vos identités ou même où vous vous trouvez dans la vie, vous êtes toujours bienvenue ici avec nous. Now, some of you may know it better in English. Welcome to the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. We are the church of many languages. Indeed, we are the church of the many. We are not the church of a few, a couple, several, some, the select, the elect, a spattering, or even a collection. No welcome to the church of the many. Not many in a majority sense. Rather, we are the welcome of and to the many. Many languages, many theologies, many hopes, diverse politics, ideologies, geographies, races, cultures, families, many dreams, prayers, and many, many, many imaginations of what is possible. Are you all with me still? Yes? Are you all with me or are you imagining what's possible? With all of our diversity, we remain one beautiful, beloved church in Jesus Christ. May I get an amen? Amen. amen. In this closing worship of General Synod 28, let us gather our many hearts up as one as we approach the well of living water. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to the water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people,
it be seated? When our African ancestors enslaved on these shores sang, Give Me Jesus, they were reconstructing the reality they were living by invoking another. The other reality they summoned. In those songs, the same reality we summon in ours is the reality of the free love of God in Christ Jesus. They were naming the gift of God and another possibility. In our text for this closing worship, in John 4, Jesus says almost wistfully, if you knew the gift of God, the love of God in Christ Jesus, it would become in you a spring, a source of refreshment and transformation gushing up to sustain living. Because all their hope hung on the gift of God, the anthology of African-American literature tells us these songs, these songs, served as a powerful shield against the values of slaveholders and their killing definitions of black humanity. They were just songs. And yet every time they lifted their voices, impossibly powerless people were rehearsing the power that is possible in the narrative help of help and hope that they had overheard in the Bible. These songs we now call spirituals kept them alive. They keep us alive still today. In a living conversation with the stories of Jesus, they and we find ever new possibility. A way out of no way. Their song holds both refreshment and transformed possibility. Just a song. It is just a conversation that transforms what is possible for the Samaritan woman who meets Jesus at Jacob's well. All they do is talk. And yet, by the time they part company, she has a reconstructed sense of herself and her world, a new sense of what is possible. And she goes back home to tell everybody else about it. Let's say the conversation took 15 minutes, 20 tops. And the woman's whole life was changed. In the high-tech, complex, ridiculously complex global community we live in, 
early in this 21st century, we may have trouble imagining that a song or a conversation can change the world. But this conversation, like the spiritual, held the possibility of refreshment, of transformation, of a new world, more like the kingdom of God. Just a conversation. Yes, but not just any conversation. When Jesus and the woman meet at a place that I am certain looks exactly like the places we have enjoyed so much during our time here, it's not for a neighborly chat. They were literally standing in the middle of a nasty church fight. In the United Church of Christ, we have our disagreement to sure. But compared to the Samaritans and the Jews at the end of the first century, our stuff looks like an ice cream social. <laughs> what is more, they both know, Jesus and the woman, that she is there alone in the middle of the day because she cannot go to the well with the other women when they go. They won't have her. They have shunned her. They have ejected her from their congregation. When Jesus asks her for a drink from her cup, because he doesn't have one, he's trying to start some. He intends to shift the context to alter the landscape. He intends to rewrite the social script. He has already committed to a future distinct from the past, a phrase that I find deeply powerful that comes from the community organizer, Peter Block. I don't know if he's a Christian or not, but he gets Jesus. But so what do you expect Jesus to do? He's the Word made flesh, okay? He is the continuing testament. He's the gift. And if this woman or anyone else is going to know that gift, he's going to have to be it there at the well. He is going to have to be the love of God in Christ Jesus. My mother would say, that's his assignment. He's got to do it. And it is the conversation they have, just, just a conversation, that holds that experience of the love of God for her. She is renewed, refreshed. She belongs again, and possibility has been renamed. In a book that I love, called Conversation is Ministry, Stories and Strategies for Confident Caregiving, Douglas Purnell says conversation is mutual sharing of what it is to be human. Conversation is care for one another, and by care he means being present to and engaging the other in ways that value their whole being and their living. If any of you have been through the TAP curriculum in pastoral care, you know this book. I wish every member of the United Church of Christ had a copy. I wish every Christian had a copy. And I don't wish that just because it comes from our own Pilgrim Press. Do me a favor and make it a bestseller. Conversation as care is being present to and engaging another in ways that value their whole being and their living. Jesus and the woman have this kind of conversation, this kind of conversation, a, a conversation as care, focused on another's well-being, on restoring ruptured community, made safe enough 
for telling the truth of your whole life. It's a judgment-free zone where self-interest is for a time, just for a moment, given a second seat where friendship, neighbor love, trumps. And you love the one you're with. That is, whoever shows up wherever you happen to be. It is a conversation that, like a spring of water, gushes up to give life, to restore, to transform. It is a conversation that both imagines and embodies what new possibilities may be. In this conversation, they enact both the different future they want to create and that future as it looks like in them. They enact both the way there and the destination. It is both the means and the end. In their meeting together, they birth new options, new possibilities that become available in their togetherness, in their committee of the whole that are not available in the sum of their parts. The shift happens there, in the practiced presence of Jesus with one another, in a song or in a conversation in which an active option is exercised in favor of over all else, in favor of what is life-giving, life-affirming, and more than that, sustains life and community. The conversation holds that possibility. And the conversation, while well, just a conversation at the well, Sam Cooke and the Soul Stirrers used to sing back in the day, Jesus gave a water and it was not in the well. When Jesus sat down that day, beside the well, he was tired. He was on his way home from General Synod. No, I mean, <laughs> what I meant to say is he was on his way home from a meeting of the gathered church where he already had a reputation of being a troublemaker and a change agent. And by then, the established leadership was working on ways to take him permanently out of the picture. But if you notice, most of what Jesus ever does is talk. Across the Gospels, even this odd fourth one from John, there is a single consistent pattern in Jesus' ministry and in his life. His strategy and his practice is this. He holds a long conversation with friends as they go from place to place, journeying together as synod, as Jeffrey told us yesterday, making sense together of life as it happens in relation to God's own imagination for us and for creation between meals. That's the model. That's it. And can you imagine it worked? I know it worked because we are here. When the church as Christ's body and presence in the world gets all pewed up, as a rector in Fort Worth said recently, we can imagine that the most important structures or the most important thing about our work and our mission is our structures and our institutions, our bylaws and our buildings, our physical plants and our programs, that they are the most important and essential resources to witness to the gift of God. But here we see that the threat Jesus represented to the Pharisees, who by this time had him on the run, 
was his conversation. In the presence of Jesus, only people mattered. He engaged people deeply, whoever, whosoever, wherever, in practiced ways that valued their whole being and their living, that cared for and cared about the quality of their lives. Writing about another brief conversation that has the power to change lives in 2 Kings 5, Walter Brueggemann suggests that you can recognize in Jesus a model for how to initiate a new narrative of well-being in a circumstance palpably marked by suffering and despair. Clearly, Brueggemann does not say that about Jesus in 2 Kings 5. He says it about a little girl who is the who, is the, who has been taken from her home and sent to live with a great general, but who, because she speaks, is healed of leprosy. She may, in fact, foreshadow Jesus as a model for how to initiate a new narrative of well-being in circumstances of suffering and despair. His conversation, like her, is small. It's small, it's low-tech, it's freely accessible, it's portable, and it's powerful. And it is an act of ministry that upsets the status quo in the church leadership and in society. It has the possibility of changing the world, at least they think so. It was odd and it was frightening to them, and we can tell by their need to get rid of him that his conversation is a powerful action. And perhaps it is because it is small, low-tech, and economical, and on an open access platform. So, the hour has come when our meeting at the Ancestors' Well is over, and we are going home. We have imagined what's possible for as long as we are allowed. Now the question is, what is possible? Well, I, I don't know the answer, but you do or you will. Besides the question as we stand here in the doorway with our suitcases packed, the question itself is much more powerful than any of the answers we might propose at this moment. I have a lot of questions. I've lived with this text since the spring of this year. I have a ton of questions. But because we have a plane, train, or automobile to catch, let me leave you with just three questions that the text in John 4 has left me with. One question. What is possible when we put our life together as God's people and care for covenant with God, our neighbors, and each other ahead of everything else. Second question. What is possible when, like the woman who laid down her water jar, we put aside fear, blame, and scarcity in favor of holding the life-giving tension that is in diversity and difference in refreshment and transformation, in what is and what is possible in God's own imagination. My third question, what can become in us and our very particular gifts in our very local places, in each of us, in each local church, in every conference, 
in us, the United Church of Christ in every setting, what in us can become a spring welling up to sustain life because we do know the gift of God in the free love of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so there's a fourth question. This is my question. I wonder what I will have to do I wonder what you have to do to make the next conversation I'm in a spring of water gushing up to save the life of somebody. What is possible for the Samaritan woman when she arrives at the well that day is a jar full of water and the certain need to come again when she leaves without her jar. She knows the gift of God firsthand. She knows what is possible has been transformed. And she has become herself a spring of water gushing up. She, like Jesus, has become a model for how to initiate a new narrative of well-being in her community. She goes home and she tells everybody, people who weren't when she left home that morning speaking to her. It turns out that Jesus isn't the only one who can practice the presence of Jesus. He is not the only one who can give me Jesus. Her conversation wells up to bless the lives of her neighbors just as his had blessed hers. She can give Jesus too. It turns out, in fact, that everything Jesus does in this text, she can do. We can do. The church can hold that conversation that refreshes and transforms heart by heart, door by door, street by street. That conversation that makes new possibility for a world that is pleading, give me Jesus, please give me Jesus. If I put my Bible right up here next to my ear, I can hear her going home. She's singing. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, please. Amen. The General Synod Program and Planning Committee, recognizing that this synod was originally to meet in Honolulu, designated tonight's offering for a ministry supported by the Hawaii Conference as an expression of partnership. In that spirit, I am pleased to invite you to offer your prayers and financial support for Family Promise of Hawaii. 
A number of UCC churches in Hawaii have joined with other religious congregations to take turns each week opening their doors to homeless families with children and providing a safe place to sleep, three nutritious meals, social service support, and, well, just plain good friendship. Through Family Promise, many of these families have experienced the transforming love of God as they move from homelessness to sustainable independence, usually within three to four months. Life-changing experiences for volunteers in the churches are also not uncommon. Not only can we imagine what's possible, but we can also make many things possible through our prayers and our gifts. So I hope you'll join me in making it happen for homeless families with children. Please make your checks payable to United Church of Christ if you're particip participating in this worship service via our live webcast at ucc.org. You can offer your gifts online at www.ucc.org slash synod offerings. Please pray with me. O oh God, whose promises are sure and through whom love and grace abound, bless now these gifts we offer this evening. May these gifts, our lives, and your blessings make a difference in the lives of those who seek to find home and safe harbor, even in the bosom of your protective shelter. And continue to grant us vision to see and hearts to believe that you make all things possible through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. A lot of people say UCC youth is, the youth is the future, but I would like to think that the youth is now, the youth is present. We're out there and we're working, we're helping, we're a part of this church. We helped with um, the moving of supplies and dog food and cat food. We're making it a lot better for, you know, the animals. We're helping people out, helping the animals out, and just making it, you know, a lot better for them. You guys, I really appreciate everything you're doing today. It's, it's all of the little things that I just can't get to or we just can't get to on a regular basis and you guys have helped out so much. You are absolutely awesome. I was um, sorting clothes in the warehouse and then hanging them on hangers and bringing them to the thrift store. Everybody's a human being and I feel like if I was in a situation, I would want help too. You can see that all the prices are like really low and affordable for people on a budget, so it's easier for them to get the stuff they need for their families and stuff. I am changing lives through UCC by helping others today at the Tampa Bay Feeding America. Today we've been unboxing produce and repackaging it for the needy. There are hungry people everywhere and there are people that need to be fed and might not be able to feed themselves or support themselves at this time so it's great that there are organizations like this that are able to um, give them a, a little bit of a helping hand. Everybody needs something to eat. Everybody needs no matter where you are, no matter what race, sex, or like you're human. You need this stuff to survive. I think it's wonderful because we're setting up the worship area so it lets people have a safe and comfortable environment for when they're worshiping and it adds to their experience. I came to General Synod to learn what we do here and how it operates. So this is perfect volunteer work because I'm helping set up for the whole thing. We are representing our church and showing what we can do. We have a lot of passion. Like we just go out and make a difference and sometimes we don't even realize that we're making a difference but we enrich people's lives and by doing that we enrich our lives. I love the UCC. The only thing that I really want people to know is that we, we are here to like help the community no matter what. Um, we love everybody equally and we just do what we have to do for our community and our um, our lives in our America. We're fun, you know, and we have energy and we have passion. So anything you want us to do, just be like, hey, this is an awesome idea, great opportunity, we'll be there. Like, we will get right to it, you know what I mean? Like, we won't even second think it. Like, we'll just be like, oh, yep, sure, we'll be there. All right. Tell us when and everything. I don't know.
it's fun, you know, we like to get up and do it, so. It's instead of just, you know, me, 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 it's, uh, it's a lot of how can I help you. Like, my church inspires me, my family, to, like, help out people that, like, don't have the stuff that other people do. We're really, like, open, and we're, like, just the same as you, and we have a really, like, great, like, congregation and a great group of kids here, and that you're always welcome. We really care, like, about other people, like, all over the world, and we'll do anything to help. We're not out to convert or to get people on our bandwagon, but we really are there to help people and to help anyone, I mean, you can walk on four legs, obviously, like, I mean, we're really there for anyone. I think that everyone should know that the youth and young adults from the UCC are here to help and we're willing to help and it's not, we're not, we're not just a bunch of teens who are sitting at home watching TV, you know, texting away, talk, talking on Facebook or sitting there with a cell phone glued to our ears. We're here, we're here helping. We wanted to be here helping, that's why we are here. I would like to invite the youth in the congregation to come forward to this part of the stage. You can sit on the floor, around the sand. A few of you can sit near the pond, and the extroverts can sit near the front of the stage. I also want to invite our new collegium to come forward and join me up here. As everyone makes their way to the way forward, okay. um, as everyone makes their way forward, let us celebrate this new moment in this convention center, set, center setting made by, made holy by God's presence in the midst of our times of business and worship, in the midst of our times of service projects and flash mobs in the midst of our music, in the midst of the beauty of this worship space, in the midst of all of the wonderful things that we have done here in these last few days. There's always a tension in the old and the new, as if shades of the old and the new cannot exist simultaneously. The youth remind us of the possibilities that we have, new ideas, new ways, continuing testament, the new collegium of those possibilities as well. And our history as a denomination is a reminder of where we've been and gives us a creative push to where we hope to be. God continues to do something new in the United Church of Christ. God continues to change lives. God continues to offer radical hospitality. God continues to speak. During the blessing that follows, let us remember our baptism and celebrate the new and the old, the young and the not so young, hands sprinkling historic water, a reminder of our connection with God Jesus, the Christ, the Holy Spirit, and with each other. Let us celebrate our blessings. We, the youth, microphone. <laughs> we, the rising voice, we, the dreamers, the hopeful, the joyful youth of the United Church of Christ, bless you as a new collegium. We, the young, are yet filled with ancient resolve. We offer the blessings of that resolve to you as the leadership of our passionate, diverse, and multicultural denomination. Step up in hope. 
Step up for justice. Step up for peace in our time. Step up for the work of God in my church, in your church, in our church, the United Church of Christ. My, my church, church, your, your church, church, our church, church the United, United Church, church of, Christ. of Christ. And we, we the Collegium of Officers, give thanks for the rising voice of you dreamers, the rising voice of you joy-filled and hope-filled dreamers and youth of the United Church of Christ. We welcome your energy and your vision for our passionate, diverse, and multicultural church. Step up in hope. Step up for justice. Step up for peace in our time. Step up for the work of God in our midst. Lift up the future. Together we follow the call to new and inventive ministries in a prophetic church. My church, your, your church, church. our church, this United, United church, church of Christ. Of Christ. You were supposed to say. My, My church, church, your church, church our church, church, this United, United church, church of Christ. Christ. May God continue to unite us in harmony with each other, with the Holy Spirit, with nature, and with the love of Jesus. Peace wellness, blessing, and courage be with every setting of the church. Let us share this blessing of living water in my church, your church, our church, this united church of Christ. My, my church, church, your church, 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 our church, church the united, united church, church of Christ. Of Christ. Okay, we're gonna sprinkle. I think we need to go that way. Oh, after you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Give me water.
good friends. Good friends and brothers and sisters, go forth now into the world. Go forth to serve with gladness. Go forth, be of good courage, and hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And then the church said, amen. Your 